during the time Marius is um, connecting, connecting the yeah. camera. Ah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Marius, I will, ah, great. We can see you. We can present, I can present you very briefly. So Marius uh, is since um, 96 professor of inorganic chemistry at the University of Bucharest. Uh, he has several awards, so now he's member of the Romanian Academy, full member since, since 2009, a member of the Academia Europea since 2004, Member, uh, corresponding member of the Academy European des Sciences et Lettres uh, since 2004. He's very, um, he's a good friend of lots of French colleagues, so he's well known in France, we can say. Okay, uh, he's head of the inorganic chemistry department um, in um, in Bucharest, president of the chemical science section of the Romanian Academy and honorary member of the Academy of Science of Moldova. So he graduated in Romania and then uh, in 92, he went to Göttingen to the group of Professor Ruski. He visited lots of groups in France and he began with the group of Professor Olivier Kahn where his story with molecular magnetism began. And he was visiting professor in Bordeaux, in Göttingen, in Angers, in uh, Paris, in uh, Manchester, in Strasbourg, in Toulouse, in Valencia. So he's well known in the field of coordination chemistry and uh, molecular magnetism. So Marius, I give you, you, you have um, uh, several minutes to present your talk and I'm very happy to host you for this conference. Thank you very much, Sylvie, for the nice presentation. And I also uh, would like to, to thank the organizers for inviting me to, to attend this very, very interesting uh, uh, conference. So uh, le let me start with just a moment. Let me start with the title of a book because uh, this sentence develops a very interesting and useful point of view um uh, in uh, crystal engineering because uh, uh, first of all we uh, if we consider the crystal as a supramolecular entity at the first level we have to identify and to characterize all the non uh, the all the interactions occurring in the crystal and supporting the uh, uh, three-dimensional architecture so yes the crystal is a um, uh, supramolecular entity. And I will focus, uh, because I'm a coordination chemistry, on crystal engineering based on uh, um, uh, coordination compounds. And, mm. moment. And, uh, because we are talking about coordination compounds, we, we have to show uh, whether we are able or not to uh, to manipulate the second coordination sphere that is that relies on mainly on non-covalent uh, interactions. So, discussion of, of the crystal, we will identify first the uh, let's call it a primary structure that arises from the metal ligand interaction that is strongly um, uh, important because it is uh, oriented in space. So we can uh, have a first control on the overall topology of the crystal we want to, uh, to design. And uh, this is one example uh, on, the on the right uh, uh, side of a compound we published recently, and that is based on um, uh, Trinuclear nodes is somehow a specialty of, of the house. So we construct coordination polymers using uh, heterometallic uh, species as nodes and a polycarboxylate ligand as a spacer. And uh, as you see, um, this uh, uh, architecture arises mainly from metal ligand bonds. So the metal ion in such systems uh, exerts, a, uh, the metal ions exert a structural role because of their uh, coordin uh, coordination algorithm or the preferred, let's say, coordination number and, and the geometry. 
and then a functional one because the metal ions are carrying uh, uh, very important properties for example magnetic properties or optical properties if we, if we are talking about lanthanides and luminescent materials or redox properties of course we need then the ligand that can be considered using the language of supramolecular chemistry as being a designed or programmed species uh, with uh, uh, certain information that, that is read by uh, the metal ions. And then the secondary structure that uh, can arise from a convolution of various uh, interactions, uh, the uh, most important being, of course, the hydrogen bond interaction because uh, again, this interaction is uh, uh, oriented in space, and we can have a control on the uh, 3D architecture. And uh, the h bond interaction can also be combined with pi pi stack, uh, uh, stacking or uh, our uh, metallophilic interactions. So we can combine these two ideas with, with one example I selected from uh, uh, our work. So we have, for example, uh, a binuclear node that is cationic, and these nodes can be connected with linear spacers, generating grid uh, uh, coordination polymers, um, grid with a grid structure. And um, because the coordination polymer is anionic, the, uh, is cationic, the anions are demanding from space. So we have two problems which are involved in the formation of channels or uh, in um, uh, uh, the anions which ask for a place or another problem what we are facing with is represented by interpenetration. The, but we can manipulate uh, these two type of interactions by using an anionic spacer. So we do not need the other anions. So the, the node is cationic. The, uh, we have a, a dicyanide or gold linear spacer that is anionic. So we have a neutral grid-like coordination polymer. And uh, the packing interaction uh, of this um, of these coordination polymers in solid state is driven by the gold gold interactions. So we do not have an interpenetration. We do not have other anions occupying the uh, channels which are formed uh, in uh, in these crystals. So. Uh, when uh, we are discussing about crystal engineering of coordination polymers, we have to consider simultaneously the metal ligand bonds and also the non-covalent interactions. But the non-covalent interactions are, are also important in modulating the magnetic properties because such interactions, I have selected only two examples, uh, such interactions can favor the uh, magnetic coupling between two uh, paramagnetic ions. So uh, this is one example of a, a binuclear compound Actually, it's a supramolecular binuclear compound because we do not have a general bridge but we have a hydrogen bond interaction connecting these two units. This is a monoethanol amine that is deprotonated, and one is deprotonated, the other one is not. So we have these two units connected by hydrogen bonds. And the variation of the magnetic moment with temperature clearly shows that these two metal ions interact relatively strongly through the hydrogen bonds and the value of the exchange coupling constant is quite high uh, in comparison with uh, um, uh, the exchange interactions in, uh, in other systems in mediated by genuine uh, bridges. And another example, uh, so these are the uh, hydrogen bonds that uh, mediate the, uh, these interactions at the these magnetic interactions at the supramolecular level. And another example is here where the pi pi stacking interactions can uh, favor either uh, anti ferromagnetic interactions or ferromagnetic interactions in this off slip. Uh, uh, pi pi stacking of the uh, bipyridine groups, the degree of overlap 
strongly influence the uh, uh, spin polarization mechanism that is illustrated here. So we can have at supramolecular level either an antiferromagnetic interaction or a ferromagnetic interaction. So uh, I would want uh, uh, to mention also that in uh, these cases we have uh, 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 mononuclear species. So the, all the interactions occur uh, only at the supra molecular level. So I now I have selected several examples which are developed in my lab, uh, where we have illustrated that we are able to manipulate the uh, uh, non-covalent interactions to construct uh, crystals. So uh, vanillin is a very generous uh, starting material to generate shift bases. And uh, this shift base here is very popular in heterometallic chemistry in the molecular magnetism because we have two compartments, a small compartment for a 3D metal ion and a large compartment for uh, another metal ion and especially for lanthanides because the size of this compartment is appropriate to accommodate the large lanthanide cations. But we also have shown that uh, this compartment can also be able to accommodate another 3D metal ions, provided its stereochemistry, uh, its uh, stereochemistry demand is not very serious. I mean, the cobalt two can uh, choose another stereochemistry, not only uh, uh, the octahedral one. But this compartment here is also uh, appropriate to interact with hydrogen bond donors. And the simplest one is the water molecule. And this is uh, one example where the water molecule is hosted in this crown ether like compartment. So let's see how can we manipulate this preference of this compartment to act as a hydrogen bond donor to construct crystals? And uh, we started with uh, this system that is uh, this species that is a self complementary, complementary species because we have simultaneously within the same molecule the hydrogen bond don donor and the hydrogen bond acceptor. And uh, uh, the analysis of the crystal structure indeed shows the formation of the supramolecular dimers, which arise from uh, one hand, the hydrogen bond interactions between the aqua ligands and the compartment, the, uh, the O4 compartment of another uh, species, and which is also uh, reinforced by stacking interactions occurring between the phenyl rings of the shield based ligand. And uh, again, we uh, uh, have um, mononuclear species or supramolecular dimers and uh, um, the hydrogen bond interactions uh, mediate the uh, as weak antiferromagnetic interaction between the manganese three ions. So this is a manganese three compound. But um, so we realized that actually in all these compounds we have, we have uh, synthesized with this compartment free, all the packing in, uh, diagrams are dominated by this tendency of the, these spaces to interact each other to this hydrogen bond. So once we learned this, we decided to, uh, uh, to construct supramolecular uh, polymers, metal containing polymers, by uh, exploiting this tendency of the formation of the supramolecular dimers, and then connect these supramolecular dimers through other non-covalent interactions, for example, uh, uh, argentophilic or aurophilic interactions. And this is one example uh, uh, here. So we have actually, uh, this is a heterobinuclear compound, but in solid state, we find what we can predict actually uh, the packing diagram uh, of this uh, system. We observe this supramolecular uh, moiety generated by the hydrogen bonds. And on the other hand, um, we observe the silver silver interactions. So we were able to, uh, to design a supramolecular heterometallic uh, coordination polymer 
simply by manipulating these two types of interactions, hydrogen bonds and silver, silver bonds. Um, this, uh, the sheaf base itself is interesting to, uh, uh, to illustrate whether we are able to uh, construct architecture without the help of the metal ions. And uh, we have chosen for uh, in, uh, um, an, uh, an ammonium salt because we expected that the ammonium uh, cation will act as a hydrogen bond or uh, donor towards these two compartments, generating this kind of supramolecular entities, which are packed in the crystals through this convolution of hydrogen bond interaction generating these supramolecular dimers. And then the dimers will pack via the pi pi stacking interactions between the phenyl rings. And the next question was whether the molar ratio employed between the hydrogen bond donor and the hydrogen bond acceptor plays or not a role in the packing of the uh, species. And we moved from uh, two to one. We have chosen this one because we expected this kind of interaction between these two molecules. And, and uh, another, uh, another uh, molar ratio. And we observed and described this kind of supramolecular tetramers if we look at the metal ions. So these are supramolecular tetramers which are assembled via pi pi stacking interactions and the most importantly, uh, via the hydrogen bond interactions established between the ammonia and this uh, compartment here. Now we uh, designed a uh, system a little bit more, more complicated. So um, we employed the same planar system containing here uh, nickel two, for example, that is planar in this case, and two hydrogen bond donors, namely the so-called Reinecke salt. In the Reinecke salt, we have ammonia ligands and ammonium cations. So both can act as a uh, hydrogen bond donors. So we expect that both will interact with this compartment here to generate supramolecular channels, which are presented in this, in this scheme. So this is the Reinecke anion with the two ammonia ligands. And this is the ammonia cation, uh, the ammonium cation. And the crystal structure indeed reveals that we uh, designed this supramolecular coordination poly uh, polymer where the units are assembled via the hydrogen bond interactions involving the ammonia ligands from the uh, anion, from the complex and chromium anion, and the ammonium cations. Now the problem was, what happens if we, uh, our gas here that is neutral in this uh, first system I presented is replaced by a cationic one? So in this case, we will remove from the uh, packing the ammonium cations. So we will have a, a packing that is based only through the hydrogen bond interactions between the ammonia ligand and the O4 compartment here. So uh, we synthesize this uh, gold three compound. Gold three, like nickel two here, prefers a square planar geometry. Actually, the system, uh, the host system, will be very similar except the charge. And the packing diagram that, uh, shows that, and the analysis, of course, of the crystal structure shows that uh, we assembled these cations with these cations with the anions through the hydrogen bond interactions involving the ammonia ligand, and we generated these supramolecular 1D uh, polymers. 
So we can play uh, on uh, uh, what we call the second coordination sphere. So uh, this is the first coordination sphere of copper one in, uh, in this compound. So this is a, a cationic compound containing uh, acetyl acetonato ligand and a phenantrolin molecule. This is a cationic complex. We have a water molecule and this represents the first coordination sphere of kappa. But we can uh, manipulate the second coordination sphere playing on the hydrogen bond abilities of this uh, aqua ligand here. Actually, we can add our hydrogen bond acceptor that is represented here with palladium with, uh, and nickel. These two metal ions have been chosen because they prefer a square planar uh, geometry. And we can combine then generating supramolecular uh, heterometallic dimers simply by playing uh, on the uh, second coordination sphere of the two species. So we expect the formation of these supramolecular dimers and the crystal structures indeed indicates that we obtained our desired supramolecular uh, dimer containing two, di uh, two different metal ions. And we also uh, expect and we observe that uh, uh, supramolecular 1D chains are formed through pi pi stacking interactions. So um, this uh, system it's also very interesting. We have to look carefully on the abilities of these two ligands here to be involved in pi pi stacking interactions and uh, to identify what kind of interactions uh, can we find with these systems. So, once again, this is copper, this is acetyl acetonate, and this is 110 uh, uh, phenantrolin or bipyridine or other similar uh, chelating ligands. And uh, we observe this model I presented here in the packing diagram in this complex. So we have, um, you observe here that we have this moiety with copper one that is penta coordinated with, with a square planar geometry. We have connected two such copper ions through 4 4 prime bipyridine. And the packing is predictable because uh, this packing uh, arises from the expected pi pi interactions between the phenantrolin rings. So that means we can uh, extend further this tendency of these fragments here to interact to pi pi stacking interactions and to construct more complex architectures. For example, to generate honeycomb layers. So uh, the uh, idea is to have here our copper complex, the copper complex, uh, each copper, uh, the copper moiety, each copper um, uh, ions uh, contains the phenantrolin and acetyl acetonato ligand. And we have to connect through the bipyridine enoxide just to generate this motif here. And we expect that we can generate such a honeycomb interactions simply uh, by controlling the expected pi pi stackings between the planar ligands. And indeed, irrespective of the nature of the uh, nitrogen chelating ligands, uh, bipyridine or phenantrolin, we observe that we can design such 2D supramolecular layers simply by playing with the composition of this, liga, of this system that contains this fragment here that plays a very important role in the packing of the molecules in the crystals. Another example. So we have learned that we can generate a kind of linear supramolecular synton through the pi pi stacking interactions. But we also know that uh, um, dicyanido uh, gold or silver complexes generate this rectangular synton. 
So we can combine the linear symptom with the rectangular one and to generate either squares or zigzag, zigzag chains through the convolution of these two types of supramolecular interactions. Once again, the pi pi and the uh, aurophilic interactions. Or we can uh, expand this uh, grid-like motif presented here into a 2D supramolecular layer. And indeed, the crystal structures reveals that uh, we can design such supramolecular layers simply by combining these two supramolecular symptoms. And in the case of, uh, of silver, we, uh, and uh, using another uh, anionic ligand here, we obtained supramolecular zigzag chains. Uh, another case, the same system. Uh, we have this supramolecular linear synton here, but we also can have a lipophilic interaction if we uh, uh, use a bipyridine uh, one uh, propylene spacer. And we will have a linear synton here combined with a supramolecular tetrahedral synton. And we expect to obtain a diamond like supramolecular architecture through the combination, once again, between these two types of uh, supramolecular syntons. So, uh, indeed, we have uh, this diamond like supramolecular network, and we identified two interpenetrating su supramolecular networks. More recently, uh, we started a, pro a project uh, on a divergent or linear um, tecton that was used for the first time in crystal engineering with the idea to uh, have within the same system uh, classical or vernerian and metal organic um, moieties. So this spacer carries the metal organic fragment, uh, fragment and the nitrogen is able to generate the classical vernerian, vernerian system. So we have synthesized and characterized a, a, a big package of complexes, but I have selected only one of them because I, I uh, prefer to focus in this lecture on the supramolecular interactions. So we have this, uh, this uh, binuclear nodes that is generated by amino alcohol ligands, which are deprotonated spontaneously in solution, generating these alkoxido bridging, uh, uh, bridges. And we have connected with the mercury containing linear spacer, and we obtained a 3D system with a nice cadmium sulfate, sulfate uh, topology. So, this is a coordination polymer that uh, contains simultaneously metal organic and vernerian fragments. But um, um, the, uh, an important question is. Uh, what is the difference between any other uh, four B4 PVD ligand and this one? B because uh, 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 the distance between the nitrogen atoms, are, of course, is important, but uh, it doesn't bring something very new in crystal engineering. So the answer is the presence of the mercury atom here and its big potential of, uh, and abilities for supramolecular interactions. So this is uh, one example. So we have a linear coordination polymer generated by this linear tecton and uh, a copper with an amino alcohol ligand. And we also have in the crystal uncoordinated molecules which interact through hydrogen bond interaction between ammonia group and the nitrogen atom here, this is not exceptional, but we identified these um, interactions occurring between the mercury atom from one coordinated molecule and the phenyl ring from another molecule. And uh, uh, this shows that this interaction generate supramolecular ladders 
which results from the connection between the 1D coordination polymers and these supramolecular interactions involving mercury atom and the phenyl rings from the uncoordinated uh, molecules. But uh, we also can exploit the preference of the mercury atom for, for, uh, for sulfur. And this uh, work was uh, done together in cooperation with Professor Christian Silvestro from the Babish Boyo University in Cluj. And the ligand contains sulfur atoms. And we, we assemble this 1D coordination polymer, but the sulfur atoms generate weak interactions with the mercury atoms from, a neighbor, from neighboring chains. And so we um, characterize supramolecular layers, which results from the combination of these two types of interaction, metal ligand and uh, supramolecular interactions. Or uh, another interesting case is this one, where because uh, uh, the molar ratio it, uh, between zinc and the space was one to one, we expected the presence of the water molecules. And if we have water molecule, we added uh, a crown eater just to see whether it plays a role in expanding the dimensionality of the structure. And we observe first an interaction between the perchlorate anions and the mercury atoms forming 1D coordination polymers. And these coordination polymers are then connected through the hydrogen bond interactions we can easily manipulate using the crown eater. And this is a packing diagram showing how these two type of in uh, these interactions are combined to generate and su to sustain the 3D supramolecular architecture. And another example here where we have two compounds which co-crystallize, so the copper compound, and our spacer that does not interact with the copper ions. And the most interesting feature of this structure is that we have a subnetwork that is constructed from these molecules which generate supramolecular layers involving uh, interactions between the mercury atom and the nitrogen atom from another molecule. And the distance associated to these interactions is presented here. Um, this uh, uh, new molecule is very appealing for studying other systems, for example, to study co-crystallization pro uh, processes. And uh, because it acts as a hydrogen bond donor, we have selected in the first step hydrogen bond, uh, it acts, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, as a hydrogen bond acceptor. We have uh, chosen various hydrogen bond donors and we have observed the expected hydrogen bond uh, interactions, but also the pi pi interactions involving the uh, pyridyl rings um, attached to, uh, the, to the mercury atom. And uh, we have uh, a 3D structure resulting from these two types of, uh, of interactions. And this 3D structure actually uh, the careful analysis shows that we have two such supra interpenetrating supramolecular uh, networks. And um, uh, using uh, one, two, three, three, uh, three hydroxybenzene, uh, the three groups are uh, uh, involved in different ways, the three uh, OH groups. One OH group interacts with the mercury atom and two others with the nitrogen atoms generating 2D supramolecular layers. And uh, because the nitrogen atom can be involved in halogen bonds, uh, our first example is this one where we have, we have the uh, um, uh, tetrafluorodiodobenzene and we assembled linear supramolecular chains uh, which result solely from nitrogen bond uh, interaction. Uh, another tecton uh, synthesized in our group is this one that is uh, an angular bispiridyl uh, tecton. It generates uh, interesting 
2D coordination polymers, but I do not focus on them. See, uh, I only want to stress uh, that uh, this system is interesting because Uh, this system is interesting uh, because each node acts as a single ion magnet, but this molecule has also a big potential uh, for studying uh, co-crystallization processes. And you observe here our molecule, and again, a, a bisphenol uh, as a hydrogen bond donor, and we assemble supramolecular 2D layers through these interactions. And these layers are further interconnected through pi pi stacking interaction involving the penta and hepta atomic rings of the azulene uh, molecule, uh, the azulene derivative. And uh, an interesting case is this one where we have the trimesic acid and the bispiridyl azulene. The expected hydrogen bond interactions are observed here, but a very interesting uh, feature is represented by the hydrogen bond interaction established between the other two carboxylic group of the trimesic acid that generate uh, supramolecular helical chains, which are supported by hydrogen bond interactions. And this structure can be described as being formed through two such supramolecular uh, chains, which are connected then by the azulene derivative. And of course, this uh, system is also able to generate supramolecular solid state architecture through hydrogen bond interactions using, again, this di uh, iodo uh, derivative uh, as a tecton. And uh, just uh, uh, rapidly, a, um, an, an, uh, sorry. Another way to uh, uh, to take advantage of the uh, uh, pi pi stacking interactions. So this complex containing zinc and lanthanide are uh, supposed to be luminescent. And these compounds have been synthesized containing here an acetate or ligand. So our idea was to graft these complexes on graphene. But in order to do this, we need this pyrene group that can interact with the graphene surface. And our idea was to replace the acetate ligand here, that is a bridge between zinc and the lanthanide, with uh, um, uh, butyric acid that contains uh, the pyrene group, we expected to play a role in grafting these molecules on graphene. And indeed, this is a static uh, uh, precursor with the acetate ligand. We can easily replace this carboxylate group with this one. So this is the zinc europium compound. This is the uh, uh, zinc terbium compound. Both are luminescent. And this compound has have been attached to graphene. This is the complex containing acetate. This is a, a compound in crystalline uh, phase of uh, uh, the compound containing the butyric, the uh, but tirate ligand with the pyrene group. And this is this compound attached on the graphene. So we have succeeded to attach luminescent compounds. These are the luminescent spectra of uh, lanthanide based compounds on the surface of uh, graphene. And this is uh, the other case of the terbium compound. So this was my story. I would like to ask all my co-workers, their names have been already mentioned on the uh, publications I mentioned on each slide. So uh, but these are my former and, and present PhD students, Christian Silvestro for the organometallic parts, uh, Narcis Avarvari for uh, the uh, part concerning the second coordination sphere, and Sergio Shova for solving for us some crystal structure which was which were very complicated because either the crystal uh, were not good or uh, uh, or too or too small. 
and uh, financial support for uh, uh, our uh, research council and from the University of Bucharest. And thank you very much for your kind attention.